Okay, this is a tutorial covering lighting in V-Ray using an HDRI Sky Dome and V-Ray Sun. I've got a basic test scene here to indicate what we're looking to achieve. Effectively, we want to light our scene using an HDRI via this V-Ray Dome light. Uh, the benefits of using HDRI are that it'll give you a very realistic, very natural, varied quality of light on your scene, and it'll also give you accurate reflections. Um, at the same time, we want to introduce a V-Ray Sun to give us the very strong direct lighting and strong shadows, which you don't get from the HDRI. Um, we'd also like to be able to link these two elements together so that when we select our dome light and rotate our dome light in order to adjust the direction of the sunlight on our scene that the V-ray light, the V-ray sunlight moves with our HDRI image. At the same time we want to be able to see our HDRI in our viewport background and finally if I do a simple test render we want to be able to render out the scene uh, and have have a suitable alpha channel that we can use for selection in post-production later on. So if I just switch from the RGB over to the alpha channel, you can see that that's given us a clean alpha channel. Okay, so we're just going to reset our scene and get started from the beginning. Okay, so we've got a completely blank 3ds Max scene here. I'm going to merge in a model that I've made previously to act as the subject for our lighting tutorial. So I've just mer merged in a model of a house that I made some time ago. You'll see that it's got a very simple white material on it. I am also going to create a V-Ray plane and assign exactly the same material to that V-Ray plane. In order to introduce our HDRI, we want to create a V-Ray dome light. So I come over to the create panel under lights, drop it down to V-Ray and then select V-Ray light and I'm just going to click that roughly at the origin and drop this down from plane to dome. I'm also going to set that exactly at the origin just by right clicking on the move. Um, under the modify panel um, I'm going to change our multiplier from 30 to 1. By default the, the V-Ray light seems to come in with a multiplier of 30. For this particular exercise, one is perfectly suitable. If we scroll down to the texture slot, um, you'll see this blank texture slot here. Click on that, and that will bring up um, a series, series of options. Scroll down to the point where you can find V-Ray HDRI loader. That, that's what we're looking to load the HDRI in, in, into the dome light with. Some people still tend to use um, the standard bitmap loader. Um, I think when you've got the HDRI loader, using the bitmap loader it makes no sense at all. HDRI gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of control, um, a lot of very useful options for controlling that HDRI. So I'm going to double click on that and uh, we've got HDRI in the texture, the use texture slot. I'm going to then drag that HDRI over to one of the slots of our material editor as an instance, that's very important, <coughs> excuse me, and it'll bring up the, the dialogue of that HDRI loader. From there it's a simple case of browsing to a suitable HDRI. Um, I've found that a lot of artists tend to prefer using EXRs um, over HDRIs. I understand that's because there's, um, there's more information in the EXR, um, so you don't have quite the limitation that you do with the HDRI. Um, so while we say it's a, it's a tutorial in HDRI, it's actually, we're actually going to be using an EXR image. So with that selected, I'm just going to say open and you can see that's loaded that into our material slot. Straight away you, you'll notice that this is completely white. That's because of the, the nature of the HDRI and the amount of information contained in that image. Because we're using the V-Ray HDRI loader, that gives us a lot of tools to be able to, uh, to control how this displays and how it renders. Under processing, um, we have these two uh, inputs. One is overall multiplier and the other is render multiplier. These are very, very handy. They have a relationship with one another. And by adjusting these, we can ensure that we can see the, the HDRI image both in our material editor and in our viewport background. But at the same time, it'll compensate and render correctly. So I'll drop this overall multiplier down to 0 0.01, for instance. And you can see in the material editor, we can now see the image. 
In fact, I'm going to make that a little bit darker even, so we can see it a little bit more clearly. In order to compensate, we want to up our render multiplier to 200. 200 times 0 0.005 gives you 1. And effectively, for this exercise, we want our render, the, the multiplier which this HDRI renders, we want to be set at 1. Um, so you can see how the relationship between those two values works. Straight away, now that we can see the HDRI in, in the material editor, we can see the mapping is, is not suitable for what we need. So I'm going to drop down the mapping type from angular and change it to spherical. And that'll give us the correct mapping for this image. I'm just going to close that. So now that particular image is assigned to our V-Ray dome light. Now we want to get our HDRI showing in our viewport background to assist us with setting up the lighting. So what I'm going to do is bring up our material editor and hit 8 to bring up our environment and effects. From there you can drag the HDRI loader into our environment map as an instance again. Close that and in our perspective viewport I'm going to hit Alt B to bring up our viewport background settings and I'm going to check use environment background and also check display background and you will see that that brings our HDRI into the viewport background and it's been adjusted by our material editor so we can actually see see that image very very clearly. I think at this point we can set up a V-Ray physical camera and, uh, and do a quick test render. So I'm going to go over to the create panel drop down V-Ray and select V-Ray physical camera and I'm going to create that camera and just adjust its position very quickly I'm going to set that at uh, the heart of a reasonably tall person standing in front of this house ok let's select that camera and make sure our safe frames is showing and let's get a little bit closer to our house ok selecting the camera and under the modify panel we just want to have a look at our camera settings before we uh, start to render firstly I'd uh, uncheck vignetting it's um, vignetting is something we can add in post I generally tend not to use vignetting on the camera um, also, our, by default, our white balance will come in at D75. Um, I tend to use neutral. Some artists use different white balance settings. You can experiment and decide what, uh, what's best for you. I use neutral in this particular instance. The rest, the rest of the V-Ray camera settings we can leave as default uh, for the moment. Um, we could adjust our exposure using our f-stop, um, but we can do that once we've done some, uh, some render tests. So I'm just going to quickly do a basic test render. Making sure sRGB is ticked if you're working in a linear workflow. Okay, you can see the scene is now being lit via the HDRI. Um, you can see some shadow, some fairly undefined shadow. You can also see quite a lot of noise is being generated. Because we're using the V-Ray dome light, this is easily fixed. Um, you can simply come down to our sampling subdivisions, increase that, say to 16, and that should clean up the noise considerably. Which you can see that it has done. Um, what we do want to do is now introduce a V-Ray Sun, because we're not getting um, incredibly strong uh, direct lighting and we're not getting incredibly strong shadows if I just show that last frame buffer um, yeah it, it'd be good to introduce the V-Ray Sun just to get some more defined direct lighting in this scene in order to achieve this accurately what I'm going to do is create a, another V-Ray physical camera initially so let's create our physical camera I'm going to take the actual camera itself and center it at the origin, which is in exactly the same place as our dome light. I'm also just going to center the target. Selecting that light, I'm going to uh, make sure we're looking through that camera. Um, the, the sun in the HDRI image is, um, is directly, we're, we're, we're looking directly at it now. 
um, if I select the target of that camera I can begin to raise the target and actually point it at the sun so you see our V-Ray camera right at the origin in exactly the same spot as the dome light with its target pointed at the sun in the image in the, in the HDRI image now, now that we've got that camera pointed directly at the sun we can create our V-Ray sun and align it to the camera to get to make sure that the sun is is in the correct position. So I'm going to create our V-Ray sun. It's going to ask you, ask would you auto, like to automatically add V-Ray environment V-Ray sky environment map? No, because we're using an HDRI. There's no point in adding the um, the the environment map. Just going to align that to the target of the camera. Select the target of our sun. Set that at the origin not quite at the origin because we don't want to be able to we want to be able to select the dome light and select the target of the sun independently so I'm going to move that just a little bit off some tutorials I've seen have the target of the sun kind of all the way down here that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me uh, we want the we want the the V-ray sun the rays coming from the V-ray sun to be parallel to the rays coming from the sun in the HDRI um, so it seems sensible to me to have the target of the sun close to the origin, close to the center of that dome light. With that done, we can select our camera that we used to align those and delete that camera. Now what we want to do is we want to link the V-Ray sun to the dome light. That's simple. We select our target and our V-Ray sun, select our link, and link both of those to the dome light. So now you'll see if I select the dome light and rotate, they rotate together. Looking in our perspective viewport, you can see that obviously the sun rotates with the dome light, but our image stays fixed. So what we want to do that the position of, of the, the, the horizontal rotation of, of the HDRI is controlled by the horizontal rotation value here within our within our uh, HDRI loader. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have the rotation of our dome light and our whole lighting setup effectively, we want to have that control the position of the sun in the HDRI image. So what we're going to do is use wire parameters to achieve that. So let's select our dome light, right click, come down to wire parameters. Now this will allow us to wire one value of the dome lights to another value of our choice. So I'm going to, with with having checked wire parameters, it's going to bring up this uh, this dialog. I'm going to go over to transform, go over to rotation, and go over to Z rotation. Clicking Z rotation, you can see it's uh, giving us an option to wire it to another value. I'm going to select the dome light. We're going to wire it back to itself, but a different value now. Under object view ray light, I'm going to extend that menu and come over to texture and under texture we've got horizontal rotation I'm going to click horizontal rotation you can see it brings up the parameter wiring dialog we've got our Z rotation and we've got a horizontal rotation of the texture we want the control direction to be from the Z rotation of our light over to the horizontal rotation of the texture so that one, that value there is driving that value so what I'm going to do is hit the control direction from that one to that one uh, it gives up. It gives the provides the expression that's driving that's driving. <coughs> excuse me, our horizontal rotation. I know from having done this before that for one reason or another that will drive the rotation. That'll drive that horizontal rotation in the opposite direction to what we want. That's easily fixed. You simply click down in that expression and introduce a minus. That will make sure that when you rotate the dome light in one direction, the the HDRI image will rotate with it in the same direction. Now that that's set up we can hit connect. Now you'll see if I make sure I'm set to rotate with our dome light selected and I rotate our dome light you'll see in the perspective viewport down here that our the sun in our HDRI rotates with our V-Ray sun and with our dome lights which is exactly what we're looking to achieve. Okay, with that set up, we can select our camera, select our dome light, rotate our lighting 
to what we feel is a suitable position. I'm going to just bring up our last V-Ray frame buffer and I'm going to save that to the frame buffer history and re-render. So now you'll see we're getting the same scene again lit both by the HDRI and the V-Ray Sun giving us nice strong direct lighting and nice clear shadows but the natural looking light quality of the HDRI. I'm also going to save that to our V-Ray frame buffer history. What you can see however is that we don't have a suitable alpha channel. If in post you wanted to replace this sky, which we can see in, in the background, um, you'd have a lot of difficulty because you don't have the alpha channel. Uh, you'd have to make the selection manually. Um, there's a simple solution to this. Um, with our dome light selected, simply check under the modify panel, simply check invisible. At the same time, we have included our HDRI into our environment map, so that means it will show up in renders, but it will give you an accurate alpha so you can make a selection and adjust that, that uh, background if you choose, or completely replace it if you'd like to. So with that render completing, I'm going to switch to alpha channel, and you can see that's provided a very nice clean alpha channel that we can use um, in Photoshop or whatever compositing software we choose. Okay, that's pretty much it. Just one final note. There's a number of ways to control the brightness uh, of the lighting in the scene or control the exposure of the image. Uh, you can do that using the multipliers on the lights, um, or you can do it using the multipliers on the HDRI loader. Many artists seem to use that technique. Um, personally, I prefer adjusting the exposure by adjusting the, um, the f-stop on the camera. Um, that's just a method I tend to use but feel free to experiment and uh, check out what works best for you. Uh, okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you've got any questions or want me to explain in further detail anything, don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks very much. Bye.